Yeah, so we were excellent internists in order to pelvic ultrasound, which showed a two centimeter subserosal fibroid, adenomyosis, and a 16 millimeter endometrial stripe. So let's break it down a little bit. Um, which fibroids are actually related to heavy bleeding? And when should a PCP consider referring patients for specific fibroid treatment with gynecology versus just initiating hormonal treatment um, that might be pretty much the same whether they have a fibroid or not? Yeah, that's a great question. So fibroids are really common. Um, up to 65 to 75% of people with a uterus have fibroids. And they range from, you know, really small one centimeter, sub-centimeter ones that because our radiologists are so good and the, the ultrasound machines are so sensitive, we can pick them up to, um, you know, people with multiple massive fibroids who are walking around looking like they have a full-term pregnancy. And so in my world, a two centimeter fibroid is small. I would say anything under about four to five centimeters is considered small. But regardless of size or location, they all contribute to heavier periods. So somebody with a fibroid, any fibroids, any size is going to have heavier periods in general than somebody without fibroids. Mm -hmm. The fibroids, if you recall, can be in three different locations in the uterus. So they can be like really hanging off the outside of the uterus. I refer to them with patients as like Mickey Mouse ears, and those would be the pedunculated ones. They can be subserosal, as in this patient. So that's in the uterine muscle layer. Um, and often, if you're looking directly at a uterus, or you're directly looking at the ultrasound, you can sort of see that there's a bulge there, but it's certainly within the muscle layer of the uterus. And then you could have submucosal fibroids, which are ones that are pushing into the endometrial cavity. And in general, the submucosal ones will cause more heavy bleeding than the subserosal or the pedunculated ones, but they can really all contribute to heavy bleeding. I think in terms of when do fibroids need to be referred to GYN, I think would be if the if either you suspect or the patient desires surgical management would really be the only, you know, true reason to refer. There are primary care doctors who do IUDs um, insertions. And so if that's you, you can go ahead and manage this um, with an IUD. If you would be referring to GYN for an IUD, you can refer for that. But yeah, if you're going to manage with an oral medication of some sort, um, then I don't think you have to refer to GYN at all. And I feel like we're seeing adenomyosis more and more on ultrasounds as kind of the technology is improving. How do you talk to patients about that? What's your spiel for explaining it? I'm a visual learner and I'm a visual teacher. So I always draw a picture to the patient. Usually like at our office, you know, the face sheet gets put on the door and at the end it gets thrown out if we don't do anything else with it. So on the back of it, I draw the patient's uterus and a little schematic um, and I'll, you know, draw on the diagram of where their fibroids are. So they really get that visual. And um, what I explain about adenomyosis is that the lining cells of the, of the uterus, those endometrial cells, that's what usually builds up and then sheds each month. Um, and adenomyosis is a condition where those endometrial cells get into the muscle layer of the uterus. We don't really know how or why it happens, um, but it does. And because our ultrasound technology has gotten so good, we're able to see that more often these days than, say, like 20, 30 years ago. So adenomyosis is the condition in which those endometrial cells get into the uterine lining or into the uterine muscle layer. And when the lining cells bleed and shed, the, sh the bleeding is also happening in the uterine muscle. And so that's a very painful process. And so adenomyosis is a condition characterized by heavy periods and also painful periods. And when the report, God bless, like you say, our radiologists are great. And oftentimes, if there's something to do with the abnormal endometrial thickness, to like, you know, ob in consultation recommended or something recommended, which uh, bless them. But when you when you see those reports and look at the numbers, like what, what things stand out or what are you looking for in terms of comments on the, the endometrium itself? So it is important to distinguish here that we're talking about a premenopausal patient as opposed to a postmenopausal patient. So in a postmenopausal patient, somebody who has gone more than a year without any periods, generally in their late 40s to early 50s, any finding of endometrial thickness in a postmenopausal patient, you know, warrants evaluation. And so that would be um, five millimeters of thickness or more. 
In a premenopausal patient, it's totally normal for the lining to be a different measurement throughout the menstrual cycle. And so if you ultrasounded someone every day for an entire menstrual cycle, you'll see that lining build up and then shed. Um, And so there is not really a number to say, you know, this is too thick and therefore it warrants biopsy, I'm concerned about hyperplasia. The day that the ultrasound is done, the thickness of the stripe could be predictive of how much bleeding, how much blood, you know, products are still in there that the patient has to bleed. And so if I were seeing the patient on this day, I might say, yeah, you've still got, you know, heavy bleeding to go versus if on the day of the ultrasound, um, you know, her endometrial stripe was two millimeters. I'm not surprised if she's saying she's not bleeding. I wouldn't be explaining it too much to the patient at all. I wouldn't be making too much of a note of it. Well, I think those that is a good wrap up for kind of ultrasound findings, unless there's anything else that you sort of look for on ultrasound or, or things that you see that are helpful in terms of nailing down the diagnosis. I mean, the other thing um, that often we can see on ultrasound are endometrial polyps. And so that would be a good reason to refer to GYN. When we see polyps, we do recommend removing them um, because they can have a very small risk of hyperplasia just within the polyp themselves. And so that would be a reason for surgical removal. Those are the big big things I'm looking for on ultrasound, those structural causes.